The condition of the tank when we started the project was in very bad shape. It's been sitting outside for 75 years with no maintenance and really no care. A slap of paint, that was about it. If we left the tank as it is, it would probably crumble to rust within the next 50 to 75 years. The preservation process will basically make the tank look brand new inside and out, uh, sealing the metal and therefore preserving it for at least another 100 years. So everything that we're doing today, good or bad, is because the people who went in that tank provided that sacrifice so we could do what we do today. The First Hazards Regiment, uh, we went through 346 Sherman tanks during the war. Holy Roller survived, and she was the only one in the regiment to do it. So I think it is very important that uh, we commemorate what the Hazards did during the war. Holy Roller is our memorial. And we don't have a lot of World War II monuments other than the cenotaphs for those who died during the war. Um, this one's in some ways shows sacrifice, but it also shows the liberation of people and the liberation of particularly countries like Holland, where the Canadians were the main liberators. And those things need to be remembered. Apparently each regiment was allowed to bring back something at the end of the war that was significant to their regiment because all of the equipment that they had was left in Europe. It went down to Czechoslovakia, a lot of it's still in Holland in museums. Um, uh, but so they were allowed to bring one thing back and I imagine for most regiments it was a much smaller souvenir that came back but for the tanker regiments and, and as I mentioned there are only two in Canada that brought back their tanks because a lot of these tanks didn't survive the war. The history of the First Hazards basically it goes back to 1856. That's when the British pulled out of Canada, the regular force, and we had to rely on militia. Hazars were light horsemen who patrolled the borders, so we became the first Hazars. And we remained cavalry, using our horses, uh, until 1939. That's when the Blitzkrieg was going on with Germany, and people realized that you needed a, a mechanized force. So the First Hussars became a mechanized unit. That's how we ended up going over to uh, the United Kingdom, landing at D-Day, which the Holy Roller landed at, and we fighting through Belgium, Holland, France, and Germany. And at the end of the war, the unit came back to Canada, and we brought back the Holy Roller. The Holy Roller is just as important as today as it was at the end of World War II. When you look at what's going on in the Ukraine, the people of the Ukraine are fighting for freedom, they're fighting for democracy, and they're fighting against a tyrant. And that's what the men of the Holy Roller and the First Hussars and all the people of the free worlds did in World War II. Uh, we cannot forget that democracy has been uh, put under threat in the past, and that remains the case th uh, today. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's quite appropriate, in fact, that I'm speaking today at a time when Ukraine, a democracy, is under threat, when the countries of Eastern Europe are wondering about their future in terms of Russian aggression and what that might mean. So when we look at our, our military past, we're reminded of the fact that democracy is only made possible when uh, military, uh, military strength is, is uh, put to use uh, when needed in a defensive way and Canada has always been there to uh, ensure democracy is maintained. Anytime there is a threat to international peace and security, anytime we have a war or conflict of some kind transpire, people gather at Victoria Park to express themselves. I think it's all the more important and all the more appropriate that they do so because with the Holy Roller preserved there in the background but still there there is a tie made we had to get the city on board we had to get the senior members of the regiment on board uh, for for taking it out of the park and, and redoing it there was a lot of hesitation because wow could we damage it will we be able to put it back into a condition uh, that we can 
survive for another 75 years? Will we get inside it and find it's too far gone and we shouldn't have moved it in the first place? All of these things we had to overcome with technical expertise and technical detail uh, to explain to the various uh, uh, powers that uh, Holy Roller is in fact suitable for preservation and deserves to be preserved. So some of the things that we have found in the tank, uh, obviously, you know, marbles and some of the smaller things that kids have put in the tank, either they dropped them in accidentally or wanted to just put it in there to say, hey, this is cool. Uh, it's been pretty interesting, especially when we found that coin dating, what, 1796? When we first started cleaning the tank out initially, um, I'm, I'm going to give you the true story. So basically I told the crew, when you're in there, go slowly. So like an archaeological thing, just slowly. But they got a little too enthusiastic. So they were shoveling and dumping it into the garbage bag. Well, if you picked up a full garbage bag, the bottom falls out. The bottom fell out. And for whatever reason, when they lifted it all the way up, sitting on top of all that garbage was the coin. And because it's a British tuppence and the thickness of it, it's kind of an unusual thing. And the question comes up is, why is that in there? A lot of people, uh, you will see movies where aircraft crews would have pictures of their girlfriends or their loved ones or some token of uh, good luck. Team is very cautious of what we are changing or are tweaking and what stays because of the history of it. Parts that were replaced on the tank would be the uh, uh, wheels in between, uh, in the middle part of the tank. Uh, they're made out of rubber, and uh, of course, old old type of rubber, and, and uh, also the uh, treads from the tank, uh, or the track rather, and, uh, because they just sitting in the park for uh, 50 plus years, uh, didn't do it any good. The track on the Holy Roller, when it came back to Canada, had to be switched and the rubber pads on the track were put on uh, when it came back to Canada so it could drive on the main roads. So those weren't the original tracks that came back with the Holy Roller. So we had to find original tracks and we found them in France. In a museum environment, every time you look at preserving an item, you're always looking at a balance of maintaining that item for posterity and in parts of it losing some of the history. If we brought in an airplane, uh, we'd repaint it. That means taking away the old paint and adding new paint. What we're losing is that, t that touch of the old paint, but we're gaining something that's going to make it a lot more easy for people to understand and take, take part in. It's not just a, a lipstick job to say it's we really are trying to do everything right. The engine grill on the back of it was never designed to sit still as a monument, so water egress into the vehicle has caused quite a bit of rust on the backside. So General Dynamics, the Hall Structures team, were trying to come up with a solution that again, looks historically accurate, but somehow channels the water through the engine grills back in a way that it doesn't go into the vehicle and create another rust pocket again. There's a big area in the back where the engine uh, used to exhaust uh, all the fumes from, uh, from the engine and that's being kept open now with a, a large grate. Uh, at the same time, the grate is, is going to be in the engine compartment, a big catch pan that is being designed to actually catch all the water that goes through the engine grills in the back of the tank. The manufacturing techniques that they use then versus what we use now is super cool to kind of reverse engineer this thing. One of the very first hurdles we had was we need to figure out what kind of steel this is. So. Typically in our welding environment, we know exactly what kind of steel you're welding to and exactly what kind of wire to weld with. But uh, in this case, back in the 40s during the war effort, it was melt down anything you can and keep those tanks coming out. And we actually found an old manual for it and it was exactly what my hunch was. And the manual stated the type of steel on the Holy Roller is a homogenous steel. So that basically means God knows what, and it's anything that you could possibly get, and there's anything you can make this thing out of, and that's what they did. And if you take the wrong weld media to that, you'll blow straight through that steel, and then it's game over, and it's basically impossible to replace a sidewall. 
The scans that have been taken give uh, such an insight into the importance of the preservation project because one can see where things have come from, from day one. And so of course it gives a great insight into what a community-led effort can lead to. Not only will we see the preservation of the, of the Holy Roller from the outside and, and what that means in terms of how uh, it will be brought back to life, so to speak, but it's a, it's a complete effort. They're going inside and, and restoring uh, Holy Roller and that is something that uh, from a preservation point of view really speaks to the complete nature of the, the focus here. I was aware of the regiment, of the veterans as well, they play a huge role, but the community that goes around it and the, the kinship and the community feeling that's there, um, well, I'd say well done. This is really a, an asset for London. I actually went to HB Beale when I was in high school for um, a year or so, so I actually knew about the Holy Roller from being in Vic Park. So I used to hang out there, <laughs> and so then I saw, like I read some articles and stuff like that of it being refurbished and I was like that is amazing like it has been mistreated over the years and stuff like that and just to give it that polish and that respect it's just awesome. Even as a, a student in school here uh, and you went to Victoria Park you couldn't help but not uh, see the the tank. I'm not sure that I paid much mind to it at then but then as I became involved in federal politics, I was a member of parliament. The first czars would invite me to their parades, uh, which very typically were, uh, were centered around the Holy Roller and the importance it played. Climbing up onto the Holy Roller as a child was kind of a rite of passage. The first time you made it on top of that thing was pretty cool. Uh, I think as you get older and you understand the gravity of what the Holy Roller is and what it's done for us as a generation, I think then it becomes more than a play structure. It was always there when I was a kid and so I remember always seeing it and now they see it too and it'll be nice to see it rebuilt and like that they care. I grew up climbing this tank. My kids have climbed the tank. Now my grandkids are climbing the tank. Well, always and ever be a symbol of freedom and democracy. Holy Roller symbolizes to me, I'm gonna say like hope. When I see it, it's a symbol of sacrifice and it's a symbol of freedom. Honor, selflessness, it's really just a reminder of our rich history here in Canada. It's a living symbol of what Canada has contributed to ensure international peace and security and democracy. This is a, a physical embodiment to me of the words lest we forget and every time I walk by it I'm reminded on those work days that the next thing I'm going to do is walk in and cast a democratic vote because of this machine and the men and women who served with it. You know you can call the tank a symbol of whatever you want, a war of peace. What you can't argue about the Holy Roller is it's the embodiment of a story. It's not just that it was used for war and now lives in peace. From D-Day fighting all the way through France, into Holland, into Germany, there were other tanks being knocked all around, but there was something special about this tank. This tank in particular was always uh, kind of a meeting spot, so, uh, you know, as you go through life, you sort of lose touch with people, but one constant was if we're going to meet up in London, we would always start here. I'll meet you at the tank. Do you know where the tank is? Yeah, what's that street again? It doesn't matter what the street is, it is Central Avenue or it could be Richmond, or it could be Wellington, or it could be Dufferin. It's Victoria Park, but I'll meet you at the tank. Those who would argue that any effort to preserve something like the Holy Roller amounts to a glorification of war haven't spoken to a veteran, haven't really taken the time to understand the importance of veterans in Canadian communities like London, haven't taken the time to learn about Canada's military past and the fact that democracy is absolutely dependent on the sacrifice made by veterans. The Holy Roller is very important to the First Cesars. It is our symbol of the regiment. It's where we celebrate uh, our promotions. It's where we go to remember, and it's where we read the names of our dead. And you can't get much more important than that. As a uh, former uh, tank officer, uh, for me to look at what's been going on with that vehicle and knowing the number of hours that were put on it, the crewmen who served in it, 
Um, to me, that this is not just a piece of metal that sits on a piece of concrete in a park. Uh, this is, when I touch that vehicle, I'm hearing the words, I'm seeing the stories. Uh, men, women, they went to war in this. Uh, they put everything they had on the line. Uh, so for me, this is not just a green vehicle. Uh, this is part of the life story of tens, if not hundreds of people. And that's what's really important. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Sergeant James Malcolm Bailey, Sergeant Lawrence Bernesh, Sergeant John Buller, Sergeant Lewis John Campbell, Sergeant Conrad Doherty, Sergeant Arthur Frederick Moore, Sergeant Wesley R. McKeith, Trooper Frederick Charles Davenport, Trooper John Donald Dumont, Trooper Joseph Eisenbraun, Trooper William Fredchuk, Trooper Edward George Flanagan, Trooper Kenneth Gordon Fleming, Trooper Omar Lucci Gucci. Lest we forget. <laughs>